should be review because we have been solving equations. We're now moving into solving inequalities. The inequalities we started with today were really simple ones that needed no solving. You just filled in a blank. But we're going to go through this and see if this sounds familiar. Define the variable if necessary. That's going to be in a case where we've got a word problem where maybe x is equal to the number of hours. Um, most of the work we've done, we have not needed to do this step. Second, write the equation or inequality. Basically, you're taking it from wherever you're doing the work and putting it on paper. Third, use what? Distributive property to get rid of any parentheses. <coughs> After distributive property, what's the next step? Combine like terms on each side. Remember, we're treating each side of the equation at this point like it's an expression, and we're simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. <clears throat> Eliminate the constant term. What is that? It's the number that's by itself. Remember, whenever we're trying to isolate a variable, we want to get the things away from it that don't have anything to do with the variable first, and then we can divide away anything that's connected to it or multiply if it's a fraction. Okay, cancel the coefficient. That's the number in front of or under the variable using multiplication or division. That's when we're trying to get that number that's attached to the variable away from it. <clears throat> number seven, how do we check it? We substitute the number we got back into the original equation to see if it comes out true. So check by using substitution. And finally, something we have not been doing, but we're going to start today because when we're dealing with inequalities, we graph them on a number line. But before we can start talking about the graphing, I want us to go to our notes on flip-flops. In inequalities, order matters. What do I mean by that? You always want to have the variable on the left side. What would be in the middle? The symbol. What is the symbol I just drew? Greater than or equal to. And on the right is the constant. So some number that we've got separated now from the inequal or the variable. If you end up with an inequality where the variable is on the right side, you want to flip the whole inequality. That's why we have flip-flops. But first, we're going to take some notes on this. So in the left flip-flop, please put the word if and follow along with me. If you have to flip-flop the sides of the inequalities, bless you. Okay, so with the states in this left flip-flop, and I'll make it larger, if you have to flip-flop the sides of the inequality, you must also flip-flop the inequality symbol. Even if you're not caught up with me on that writing, I'd like you to pause for a moment, and we're going to go into the right flip-flop and put an example. If I've got 13 in words, is greater than y. That would be written as 13 is greater than y. But right now, where's my variable? It's on the 
right side and we want it to be on the left side. So I'm going to rewrite that with y and 13. The symbol was greater than and now it's going to be less than. I think of this like a mirror image. <coughs> Okay, hey, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to decorate your flip flops, color them in, polka dots, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. 